All right, we are back. We got this thing off the trailer. It's looking dusty. I'm gonna go ahead and get it all, I guess, washed up real quick, sprayed off. I don't wanna have it sitting here looking all gross. Got some new rear shocks for it, so we'll get those on. And a nice little carbon bar, but I'm not gonna put that on, and I'm gonna empty out all the crap in there too. Get all the stuff cleaned out. All right, it actually cleaned up pretty well. The outside looks good. So we'll get it cleaned up on the inside. All right, depending on what model you have, or even if you have all the parts, you may or may not have the back shelf or the back area with the speakers. I happen to have the shelf, thankfully. Uh, this came with the car. As you can see, we got one of the new gas struts in, and it looks really good on here. I mean, even down to the old white writing. Um, it's bringing that nostalgia back, I guess. And I'll link these in the description below and any parts that I'm using to restore this car. So it came with a new strut and new ball studs for the upper and lower. So real simple. Uh, if you don't have any of the plastic trim on here, it's a 12 millimeter. Just take out each one of the uh, studs here, back them out. Make sure you have, uh, do them one at a time or have somebody hold this hatch up because it's quite heavy or have um, a vice grip on there to hold the, one of the dead shocks. If you have a shelf, you're just going to simply take out the three 10 millimeter bolts. One, two, three. This whole thing will pop out. You'll undo the seatbelt there. It'll be a slot for it. And then you'll pop this plastic off and get it in. All right, you'll remove the old shock strut there and just spin the new one in. And then the tops here have um, little slide spring things. You get a little screwdriver in there, pop it up and slide it up. That way you can get this ball in there. And you just go a little overhand tight and then pop it on there. And this will slide back down. And you can just take a little pair of pliers or something just kind of hit it down and it'll go down and that's really it trunk shocks are on everything seems good so we'll get it washed up and see how it looks at all this stuff out of here all right we got her all cleaned off most everything we can get off here come out pretty well we got the new gas struts in to hold the back up. It's working fabulous. And we're going to get the inside cleared out here and see if we can't get maybe the battery into this thing and see if uh, we at least get some lights to turn on. So let me get all this junk out of here now. All right, we got her all cleaned up. Found some miscellaneous parts, the other wipers, the whole cargo area. Down inside here, cleaned up pretty well. I had some old wedge racing seat brackets. They dropped right in and fit perfectly. Looks like the floorboard's a little possibly boogered up. Not sure, I'm gonna have to lift it up. Maybe they hit something. Uh, back seats cleaned up really well. All I did was vacuum in here. Like I said, I found the cargo hatch thing. All the pieces are back here. Cleaned all this junk and crap out of there. Door panel still got to be cleaned up. And the transmission went on it, so they just dropped the transmission, the subframe, and everything. So I got all the parts. I'm going to go ahead and try and get this thing back together. I dropped the battery in it real quick to see if anything would even happen or turn on. So let's, uh, let's see. This will be a first time. All right. Oh, look at that. Turns on. That's not bad. So yeah, we'll get the transmission back in this thing. Everything seems to be working. All the functions work. Transmission's in park. Let's see. Yep. So all this is still good. 
Well, yeah, so this might be just a drop of transmission and then go. So tell me what you guys think in the comment section. Was this thing worth 500 bucks? Was it worth the trouble of getting? Let me get everything back in and we'll take a shot of it. Okay, we separated the transmission from the old junk engine I have been dragging around. This is the automatic ML4A transmission or 4A transmission. There are two different things. I think there's a three speed automatic as well, but this is the four speed. So we'll get all the seals out and I think these are all the seals. I had to go to several different stores. So that's one of the seals you're gonna need. That's the other seal, national. And then the other seal, I think that's the torque converter seal. There's three main seals on this automatic transmission we wanna change. That one, that one. And there's one behind the converter that I'll pull off real quick. And there's a converter seal. So we're gonna get everything cleaned off and blown out, sprayed off a brake clean. All right, we got the transmission cleaned off as much as I'm gonna clean it. We're gonna go ahead and put the torque converter seal in. Got a little bit of uh, trans gel or assembly lube, oil, anything will work. You don't wanna send it in like super dry. You wanna wet it up a little bit. And then I'm using a two and three eight socket. Um, that fits pretty good on there. Most people aren't gonna have this, but this is the proper way to do it You got to have something that fits around that seal. So let me go ahead and get get the seal all lubed up Actually that seal went in without any uh, Tool I just pressed it in with my hand. I hope it don't come back out now. We're gonna work on the driver side seal We're gonna do the same thing lube it up and see if we can push it in All right, both seals went in. actually all three seals went in by hand pretty easy uh, just a little trans gel, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean up that torque converter over there, get that seal lubed up and push it all the way onto here, and then tape up the two portholes and we'll get this transmission back in the car. Hopefully it works. Alright, we got the Civic up on jacks and jack stands. Just high enough to get that stinky automatic transmission under there. We're going to slide it in being held up by this Harbor Freight engine hoist and we're gonna get it hooked up to the engine all right we got the transmission in the car definitely helps to have the right tools don't got the mount on it yet just got it torque converter bolts in and everything's secured up there holding it with the trans jack I'm gonna grab the battery and see if we can bump it off and see what happens Okay, we got the trans in the car. Uh, unfortunately, I think the fuel pump is not working. I tried three different ECUs, two different main relays, and I'm pretty sure the pump is taking a crap. I know it's not the distributor or ignition system because I can get some start and fluid in there. And my lovely assistant's gonna fire it up, go ahead. Go ahead, keep going. All right. As you can see, it does start up. We probably got transmission fluid spraying everywhere because uh, none of the hoses are hooked up. Here's something dripping or something moving. Go ahead, turn it over one more time. You just just turn it over and see if it'll start. And that's that. Lost battery power, so this is the end of this little episode here. Stay tuned for more, and we'll get this thing on the road. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe.